Hey everyone, I'm Michael Short. Come on, let's go outdoors. You know, over the years, I've looked at hunting from many different perspectives, from kids, first time hunters, women, veterans, physically challenged hunters. On this video, we're going to step into a, I guess a different world. We're gonna look at hunting through the eyes of a Métis harvester. Scenes like this are pretty familiar to most any hunter, getting geared up to spend a day out in the field hunting. However, for Bob Montgomery, there is one more significant step that he feels compelled to fulfill before his hunt starts. So, I always smudge myself and my gun before I go, just to make sure that I'm doing right by cleansing any any negativity from, from my rifle here and from myself and that I go into everything with good intention. So. And then I'll put a little tobacco down and say a quick prayer as well. August Manto, Nimoshamnak, Nokomnak, grandmothers and grandfathers. Steak in the mouse company, Mio Gisigo, Mio Incipio, Matesa, Mio Matsuin, Anots, Egua. Right by us, Muswawak. Uh, uh, pray for a quick, quick kill and and uh, good hunt today. And honor the animals by sharing with our community and and um, respecting all of the gifts that they give to us. So I'm very grateful. Mistake and ask no. As Métis people and Indigenous people, um, we're not beholden to Western uh, tag systems, but we do have our own protocols. And one of the ones that I learned recently that not a lot of people know about is if you look over here, there's a beaver lodge. And when we see a beaver slap his tail on the water, that's letting us know they're sending a signal to us to tell us that's not a good day to hunt. And so, you know, even if you've been planning for weeks, you got to turn around and go home because that the land needs to rest that day. And we need to follow our own protocols to make sure that we have sustainable populations. I'm a... Uh, a sit and wait kind of hunter. I'll find a spot through scouting and looking at game trails and finding sign and go in there really early morning is my favorite and um, just wait or if I'm hunting moose, you know, try and call them in. Um, but I just started hunting with a tree saddle so I can climb up in trees and get a higher vantage point and yeah, it's, uh, I'm still learning a lot about, you know, different strategies based on the landscape. Uh, the way that I've been taught through my mentor and, and through ceremony is that the animals themselves have agency. There's a story about um, moose sitting in a lodge and sitting around and, and a pipe floats in to the lodge and all the older bulls say don't don't smoke that pipe but one of the younger ones comes and grabs it and smokes the pipe this is an old Cree Métis story um, and what he's done is agreed to offer his life up to the hunters the next day 
Now, unfortunately, there has been criticism against the Métis and uh, indigenous hunters over the fact that they can take as many animals as they want. At least that's the common perception. So I hear it all the time too, and, and I get it, right? Um, but I, when I hear those comments, my first question is, if you were given unfettered access to all to hunt whenever you wanted and without any seasons would you kill everything that you've seen um i think it's pretty presumptuous to assume that just because you have that that you would just kill everything in sight um do poachers exist in non-indigenous communities of course the amount of of poaching and um, illegal game activity that happens in Alberta is something that absolutely needs to be addressed. Is there going to be some of that in any community? Yes, absolutely. But it's hard for me to hear that uh, people think that we're just going to kill everything because I don't think anyone, any hunter that I've ever met would, very few would ever just shoot whatever they see. And, and if they are gonna do that and they think that's what other people do, then they might need to look at what they think about animals and what they think about hunting.